never changes. Following their victory in the Second World War, an era of Cold War began in 1945 between the former allied governments of the Communist Soviet Union and capitalist United States of America, with the Communist People's Republic of China founded in 1949, eventually becoming a third competing faction in this global struggle for power. Throughout the 50s and 60s, the world's resources were aggressively claimed by superpowers and larger factions, leading to many conflicts but also investments in alternative energy sources like nuclear power. Successfully harnessing the power of the atom, scientists made great strides in compact nuclear fusion generators and miniaturized nuclear fission, as well as massive supercomputers, advanced robotics, cybernetics, power armor, laser weapons and genetic engineering. Relying primarily on vacuum tube technology, transistors were invented but never earned widespread use, limiting the advent of microelectronics. Finding great success in their use of anti-communist, pro-capitalist, nostalgic and nationalistic propaganda, the US government convinced their people to develop a deep consumer culture within a growing nuclear economy, romanticizing a wholesome image of the traditional family living the American dream, allowing for the 1950s Americana aesthetic to remain prevalent in the culture, producing similar fashion, food and entertainment for decades to come. By 1969, the United States of America sought to encourage cooperation and trade between large geographic regions, thereby reorganizing into 13 Commonwealth territories, each with authority above state governments but below federal. As technology greatly advanced throughout the final decades of the 20th century, the human population grew while resources like fossil fuels dwindled. Yet the citizens of wealthier nations paid little heed, able to continue on in relative peace and plenty, afforded luxuries because their governments used proxy wars and puppet regimes to steal resources from poorer nations, using any means necessary to secure their economic, political and military interests across the planet. This unfettered greed continued on into the 21st century, with the world's leading superpower, the United States of America, fully committed to an ultra-capitalist, profit-hungry society, which drove their great inventions and innovation, as well as their desperate need to secure more natural resources like oil and uranium. In 2021, the famous Hubris Comics was founded in Washington, D.C., known for such classics as Grognak the Barbarian, The Silver Shroud, Hell's Chain Gang, and The Inspector. In 2037, General Atomics International released their line of Mr. Handy AI utility robots, largely used as servants and low-cost employees. In 2040, the American government collaborated with vault Tech Industries to conduct isolation experiments on inmates of Tibet's prison, laying the groundwork for Project Safe House, meant to build fallout shelters across the nation in the event of nuclear war. In 2042, the wealthy genius Robert House founded Robco Industries. In 2044, John Caleb Bradburton created Nuka-Cola, which became the most popular drink in America. In 2051, the United States invaded Mexico to secure their oil refineries. In 2052, the diminishing supply of oil in the Middle East led to a price increase which outraged the European Commonwealth, sparking the resource wars of the 21st century. With Europe invading the Middle East and rising hostilities between world powers, the United Nations lost support and dissolved. In 2053, the world took a step closer toward total annihilation when terrorists launched a nuclear strike against Tel Aviv. In 2054, vault Tech began Project Safe House, commissioned to build 122 vaults across America under the pretense of providing shelters for segments of the population in case of nuclear war. However, in working with the Enclave, a conspiracy of deep state government officials, these shelters had a larger secret mission, with only 17 vaults designed to act normally as controls, while the other 105 conducted social, physical, and psychological experiments on isolated populations, studying how humans reacted to a variety of situations. Seeking to secure humanity's future after the apocalypse, the Enclave plan to gather data from these vaults to teach them about the limits of human endurance and obedience to authority, which would help them in rebuilding civilization, either by conquering the wasteland or possibly leaving Earth on a generational starship to colonize another world. In 2059, the first advanced artificial intelligence was created. In 2060, the oil fields of the Middle East ran dry, ending the war with both regions in utter ruin after which the European Commonwealth fell to civil war. 
By 2063, many of the shelters for Project Safehouse were completed, while Vault Tech worked to find participants, launching advertising campaigns with famous actors like Cooper Howard, star of The Man from Dead Horse, who filmed commercials for Vault 4. When participants were finally chosen, Vault Tech enacted a great number of readiness drills, which annoyed people into ignoring these false alarms. The world's energy crisis then grew worse in 2066, when the United States stopped all oil exports to focus solely on domestic production. This left China on the verge of total collapse, and so they mobilized their military to invade Alaska, desperately seeking to secure some of the world's last oil fields. The first ever direct confrontation between nuclear-armed superpowers, the US rallied to defend their interests in the Sino-American War, sending vast reinforcements to Alaska, and stationing more soldiers in Western Canada to protect the essential pipeline bringing oil to their nation. In 2067, the US military used fusion cell technology to produce T-45D power armor, suits of metal providing enormous protection and an arsenal of weaponry to individual soldiers. Although the Chinese had some advantages, like their larger population size and advanced stealth technology, they were years away from developing power armor, tipping the scales of battle in favor of America. In 2072, hostilities grew toward the presence of American soldiers in Canada, sparking riots and mass protests, followed by the attempted bombing of the Alaskan oil pipeline. In response, the United States started annexing Canada, massacring dissenters and stripping the land of natural resources. In 2073, the American government worked with West Tech defense contractors to launch the Panimmunity Virion project, seeking to create a drug that might save them from biological attack. The next year, in 2074, further developments and advancements in power armor allowed the United States to invade mainland China. In 2075, the Panimmunity Virion project was renamed the Forced Evolutionary Virus, successfully increasing the size and resistance of single-celled organisms, mice and rabbits. In 2076, the American military unleashed their newest line of T-51B power armor in mainland China, nearing Beijing, to leave the enemy government on the brink of collapse. On the home front, some in the United States celebrated their nation's tricentennial, while many others grew furious by food and energy shortages, taking to the streets in widespread riots that caused a state of emergency and the implementation of martial law. Later that year, the government commissioned General Atomics to produce Mr. Gutsy personal protection robots. The world at last took its final steps towards the apocalypse in 2077, as the Chinese desperately resorted to acts of terrorism, like the attempted sabotage of Hoover Dam, while the United States successfully reclaimed the entire Alaskan territory. Charged with security for the Mariposa military base, Captain Roger Maxson was outraged to learn their scientists conducted horrifying human experiments to further research the forced evolutionary virus. Maxson and his men interrogated and executed all those responsible before officially severing ties with the American government. In Nevada, Robert House dedicated all his efforts to the survival of Las Vegas, building a defense grid to disarm or destroy warheads targeting the region. He then ordered the construction of a platinum chip in the city of Sunnyvale, which would activate an upgrade to the system, implementing the full might of their defense forces. Seeking to secure his life in case of nuclear war, the President of the United States retreated to a Poseidon Company oil rig off the coast of California, specifically prepared by the Enclave to survive the apocalypse. Their preparations proved wise, as the end finally came on October 23, 2077, when the nations of the world launched their nuclear weapons, beginning and ending the Great War in a matter of hours, resulting in the destruction of human civilization and the death of billions. Although it was uncertain who attacked first and why, many believed it was the Chinese as their nation faced total defeat in the Sino-American War. This assertion was backed by records showing the American military detected four Chinese nuclear launches against them before the president authorized full nuclear retaliation. Yet others believe the US launched first, perhaps due to an error or intentional sabotage, in addition to less conventional theories that claim extraterrestrials were responsible, specifically two Zeta alien motherships which for centuries orbited Earth, observed events and abducted humans. Some also think vault Tech or the Enclave may have somehow initiated the war to finally begin their experiments and fulfill their destiny as the founders of a new civilization. Whatever the case, the world suffered utter ruin, and while some American civilians made their way toward known vaults and fallout shelters, others died needlessly, ignoring the alarms, believing them just another readiness drill. Securing as many pre-approved people as possible, vault overseers and staff locked down their shelters and began implementing the specific plan prepared for their location.
with American infrastructure destroyed and an EMP blackout rendering vehicles and electronics non-functional. FEV was released into the atmosphere, while black rain and radiation killed off or mutated many animal and plant species. Surviving the initial devastation, Roger Maxson led his soldiers and their families to a government bunker in the Lost Hills of Southern California, where they established the Brotherhood of Steel as a militaristic faction to preserve pre-war civilization. Among the many horrors born from the post-apocalypse, the year 2078 saw the scientists of Vault 87 near the capital begin experimenting on their population with FEV, creating super mutants of low intelligence but exceptional size and strength. In 2083, the Vault 12 experiment in California ended and the population departed as the shelter was purposely left unsealed, exposing them to high levels of radiation, which mutated them and many others into ghouls, beings who resembled a rotting corpse but could live indefinitely as they did not age. And while some ghouls turned feral, acting like unthinking zombies, those of Vault 12 maintained their intelligence and proved highly resistant to the environment of the nuclear wasteland founding the city Necropolis, where some came to believe they were the next stage of human evolution. The year 2086 saw the Battle of Huntersville, where Roger Maxson's Brotherhood of Steel allied with the Responders Militia to defeat the super mutants occupying the town which previously hosted FEV research. Emerging victorious, Roger Maxson was inspired to slightly change the Brotherhood's mission by guarding civilization through the preservation of technology. In 2091, Vault 8 of Northern Nevada opened, allowing the inhabitants to recolonize the wasteland. Designed as a control vault, its people were relatively healthy and well-prepared, using the Garden of Eden Creation Kit terraforming device to prepare fertile soil, eventually founding Vault City. In 2092, the Los Angeles Demonstration Vault opened, allowing its people to populate the Boneyard, founding the settlement Aditum, the Regulator's Militia, the Ripper's Gang, and Survivalist Blades. In 2093, a man named Angus founded the hub as a trade settlement in Southern California, adopting the wasteland-wide practice of using bottle caps as a universal currency, growing to become one of the biggest cities on the West Coast. In 2097, Vault 15 in California reached its breaking point, as this location's experiment purposely gathered people of diverse cultures and ideological positions, resulting in the formation of competing factions. Opening the vault to avoid catastrophic violence, many departed to form the Vipers, Khans, and Jackal's Raider Gangs, while others more interested in lives of peace used a Garden of Eden creation kit to found the settlement of Shady Sands the following year. In 2102, Richard Gray was horribly mutated at the Mariposa military base, but his intelligence greatly increased, leading him to start the Unity Project, seeking to create a truly equal society by turning the population into hive mind super mutants under his leadership as the master. In this same year, Vault 76, another control vault, opened its doors and celebrated Reclamation Day, sending its residents to begin repopulating the wastelands of Appalachia. The inhabitants of this vault went on to play a significant role in the fate of this region and beyond. In 2110, the Institute was founded by former students of the Commonwealth Institute of Technology, a faction dedicated to the advancement of science and creation of sentient synthetic human-like beings. Though they originally tried to work with the people of the Commonwealth, they eventually became a hidden, secretive, elitist, isolated, and sometimes violent organization, imposing their will upon the people of the region while crushing any faction starting to gain influence. After decades of protecting the settlers and refugees of Zion Canyon, the legendary hero Randall Clark grew ill in 2124 and recorded a final message, bidding farewell to Zion before he passed. From 2126 to 2128, the hub descended into a great merchant war until Roy Green negotiated peace, forming the Hub Central Council with two representatives from each caravan company. In 2130, Diamond City was founded in the Boston baseball stadium Fenway Park. In 2151, Dimitri Romera founded the Crimson Caravan Company. In 2155, Vault 17 was invaded by the Master's Army who turned the inhabitants into elite super mutants called Nightkin. From 2161 to 2163, the legendary Vault Dweller began their adventures by departing Vault 13 to find a replacement water chip for their purification system. Befriending a number of companions, including the courageous canine Dogmeat, the Vault Dweller drastically changed the fate of the region, accomplishing much, including the destruction of the Khans, though one of their members Darien survived and formed the New Khans, which later fell and was reborn again as the Great Khans. 
Eventually, the Vault Dweller found a water chip in Necropolis and returned home to save his people, but the Overseer then tasked him another mission, this time to destroy the super mutant threat. Returning to Necropolis, he found it destroyed by the Unity Army, forcing ghoul survivors to flee in a great migration scattering across the wasteland. The Vault Dweller then went on to kill the Master, destroy his base in the LA Vault, and defeat the Unity Army at the Mariposa military base, forcing super mutant survivors to flee as the ghouls did, scattering and forming various factions throughout the wasteland. Returning home in triumph, the Overseer thanked the Vault Dweller but denied entrance to Vault 13, claiming he did not want the population inspired by tales of adventure as it may convince others to leave the Vault and explore the world. Heartbroken by this rejection, the Vault Dweller left and founded the village Arroyo, making a great life for himself in the wasteland, while the Overseer's plan ultimately failed, as the other inhabitants were outraged by his decision, leading to a revolt and opening of the vault so many others could leave as well. Those who remained then arrested and executed their disgraced leader. Though the decision ultimately cost his life, it's possible the Overseer was actually following Vault Tech orders, as Vault 13 was a control group meant to remain closed and isolated until needed by the Enclave, who did eventually arrive to harvest the remaining population for human experimentation. In 2180, super mutants attacked Diamond City but were repelled by the Minutemen Militia, who then became protectors of the region, expanding their numbers and influence wherever possible. In 2186, the New California Republic was founded out of Shady Sands, a rapidly growing faction that by 2189 included the five states of Shady Sands, Los Angeles, Maxin, The Hub, and Dayglow. They also allied with the followers of the Apocalypse in the Boneyard, which eventually joined as well. The followers were a non-violent faction dedicated to knowledge and healing, making the Boneyard famous as a place of learning where they established a university. Founded primarily by the leader of Shady Sands, Aradesh, and his daughter Tandy, the NCR was designed to reflect the pre-war democratic values of a free society, creating a stable economy with NCR dollars as currency, providing health care, obeying laws, and electing their government. Serving as president until his death in 2196, Aradesh was succeeded by Tandy, who led them for many more decades, expanding their influence while upholding the values upon which they were founded, as demonstrated in 2205 when the NCR granted legal rights to ghouls and mutants. In 2220, the Enclave under Richard Richardson, heir to the pre-war president of the United States, created the Mark II as their own version of power armor. In 2227, the cryogenically frozen population of Vault 111 were massacred by the Institute, who abducted the baby Sean, killed one parent, and left the other alive as a backup. The Institute hoped to use the child's pre-war DNA to help them create more advanced synthetic life forms. Two years later, in 2229, the Institute attacked and destroyed the Commonwealth Provisional Government. In 2242, the grandchild of the Vault Dweller left the village of Arroyo to find a Garden of Eden creation kit, and so was not present when the Enclave attacked and destroyed their home, taking captives to the Poseidon oil rig serving as their base of operations. The Vault Dweller's grandchild, known to history as the Chosen One, went on to save the captives, kill the President, stop the Enclave's plans for genocide, destroy the oil rig, and secure a Garden of Eden creation kit so survivors could found New Arroyo under his leadership. In this same year, Vault City joined the NCR. In 2247, Bill Calhoun and Edward Sallow from the Followers of the Apocalypse traveled to the Grand Canyon, where they met the Mormon missionary Joshua Graham, joining together in the hopes of learning and recording the dialects of primitive tribes in the region. Yet shortly after arriving, the three were captured and held by the Blackfoot tribe. An intelligent man who read pre-war histories, including the decline and fall of the Roman Empire and commentaries on the Gallic War, Edward Sallow noticed the pitiful, primitive state of their captors who were engaged in a losing war with seven other tribes and quickly realized that with his knowledge he could influence and ultimately reorganize them into a proper fighting force. Enacting his plan, Sallow used Imperial Rome as the model for his new legion, seeing in them a successful autocracy that effectively integrated the foreign cultures it conquered. In Rome, he found a template for a society equal to the challenges of the post-apocalyptic world, a society that elevated the state above the individual, seeking long-term stability at all costs, implementing a nationalist, imperialist, totalitarian, homogenous culture that obliterates the identity of every group it conquers. 
successfully convincing his captors. Salo took the name Caesar as he rose to become leader of the Blackfoot tribe, naming Joshua Graham as his legate and second in command. Bill Calhoun was sent back to the followers of the Apocalypse so he might inform them of all that occurred and warn them from interfering with Caesar's Legion. Using proper military tactics and enforcing discipline, this new Rome-inspired faction waged total war to conquer many rivals, greatly expanding their influence to eventually defeat 86 tribes, conquering parts of Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, and Arizona where they founded their capital Flagstaff. Further west, the NCR also underwent a significant cultural change as President Tandy died, allowing more corrupt and incompetent leadership to run the government. In 2266, the Institute nearly destroyed the Railroad, an organization formed to free sentient synthetic beings from forcefully serving their creators. In 2271, the Desert Rangers joined the NCR, allowing for their expansion into the Mojave Wasteland. By 2274, the NCR grew increasingly corrupt, with President Kimball eliminating the last of Tandy's regulations to allow wealthy barons more land, widening the divide between rich and poor. Meanwhile, Robert House, who survived the long years by placing his mind into a computer, feared the loss of an independent New Vegas, and so allied with the chairman, Omertas, and White Glove Society tribes to help maintain control, defend their territory, and expand their influence. Ultimately, Mr. House succeeded in his plans by negotiating the Treaty of New Vegas, giving Hoover Dam and McCarran Airport to the NCR in exchange for 5% of the dam's energy output and the continued independence of New Vegas. Becoming a popular tourist destination for citizens of the NCR, New Vegas thrived under Mr. House and the three families, but trouble peaked over the horizon the following year in 2275 when the Legion scout Ulysses found and reported on Hoover Dam, prompting Caesar to start assembling troops east of the Colorado River. In 2276, the Brotherhood of Steel suffered a number of setbacks as a splinter faction broke off in the capital wasteland and they faced defeat against the NCR in the Mojave Desert, forcing them to take refuge in a hidden valley. In 2277, Caesar's Legion, under the command of Legate Joshua Graham, attacked the NCR in the First Battle of Hoover Dam, winning the initial confrontation but ultimately falling into a trap by chasing the enemy into Boulder City where pre-prepared explosives detonated, securing victory for the NCR. Outraged by this failure, Caesar ordered the Praetorian Guard to light Joshua Graham on fire before tossing him into the Grand Canyon. Somehow, Graham survived and went on to have many more adventures, earning fame as the Burning Man. In that same year, on the other side of the continent, the Lone Wanderer left Vault 101 searching for their father, beginning their legendary adventures across the capital wasteland, ultimately working with the Brotherhood of Steel to protect Project Purity from the Enclave, securing a large supply of clean water for many years to come. In 2281, Caesar grew progressively more ill from a brain tumor, but nonetheless continued his plans to conquer the West. Even after two centuries, Mr. House continued to search for the platinum chip that never arrived before the war, spending over 800,000 caps searching the wasteland, until finally found and sent by courier through the Mojave Express. Although Ulysses of the Legion was the original carrier, he turned down the job, and it instead went to the next in line, a courier that did not arrive, as they were captured, robbed, and shot by Benny of the Chairman Gang. Rescued by the robot Victor and saved by Doc Mitchell of Good Springs, the courier survived and began a journey to find Benny and recover the package. Joined by loyal companions, the courier earned fame as a legendary hero throughout his adventures, eventually recovering the platinum chip, settling the score with Benny, and by 2282 was in a position to decide the fate of Hoover Dam and New Vegas by siding with the NCR, Caesar's Legion, or Mr. House. Fighting in the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, the courier made his choice and changed the Mojave forever. In 2283, Brotherhood of Steel factions across the continent finally unified to recognize Arthur Maxson as supreme commander of the organization. In 2287, the Institute once again nearly wiped out the railroad, while the Minutemen, now declining from the height of their power, lost the Battle of Quincy to mercenary gunners who slaughtered the town. The Minutemen leader Preston Garvey brought survivors to Concord. After witnessing the murder of their spouse and abduction of their son, the sole survivor of Vault 111 awoke from cryosleep to embark upon a legendary adventure, earning fame as a hero while he searched for his son and those responsible for the massacre of his vault. In the end, he found out what happened to Sean and became so influential, his support would tip the scales to favor one of four factions vying to win the War of the Commonwealth.
Choosing between the Institute, Railroad, Brotherhood of Steel, and Minutemen, the Soul Survivor's decision forever changed the region. By 2291, the NCR predicted the start of famines unless food production increased. And in 2296, the Overseer's daughter, Lucy, left Vault 33 to begin her adventures in the Wasteland, where she encountered Maximus from the Brotherhood of Steel and a ghoul bounty hunter formerly known as the actor Cooper Howard. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Sir Jeremiah Ironside of House Comsea, Chris Walder the Crimson Shadow, Griffin Giant's Hammer, and Kurgan the Immortal. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.